Now, so far, what we've been doing is entering all of these ma values manually. So, for example, if I go to File and you see this whole path, it's been entered in manually. You should not really do this in production because, you know, imagine that we, we right now we just have two stages. It's very simple, but imagine you had 15, 20, 30 stages. Uh, if you if you need to adjust, say, the username or the password, say the password changed for DB2 and you've got five different DB2 connections, you would need to go th through, first of all, locate all of the five stages and then separately update every single one of these with the correct information. And it is very, very tedious. You don't want to do that. And another reason that you don't want to do that is if you save this job, export this job, which you would do up here, export and then go to data stage components and then send it off to a colleague um, or a client who's going to run these imports, run your ETL jobs, what if their system doesn't have the same path, right? In that case, they need to adjust the path and run it. But if you've, again, if you've got 10, 15 stages in there, they would have to A, know your jobs, which they may not, and then B, once they find every single one of them, they'd have to go in and update it. So you don't really want to type in all of that manually. And instead, what you should do is go up here to something called Job Properties. And in Job Properties, you're going to see a tab called Parameters. And in the parameters, what you want to do is list out all of the things that you would normally type in in these fields and and put them in a list here. And those are called parameters. Essentially, they're really just variables. Whatever you put here will be then replaced in those in those values. And I'll show you how to do that. Now, one thing is to list them all out. But this alone is going to be, you know, it's going to be fairly long, potentially. You could have 15, 20, 30 different parameters. And so it's actually pretty easy and, and much nicer, really, to group them together. And the grouping is called a parameter set. So we're going to first create some parameters, and then we're going to create a parameter set. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do under parameter name is type in CSV. And for consistency, I'm going to make all the parameters lowercase. Prompt is something that a person who's using this file would see as a prompt. So it's nice to type something uh, uh, useful in here, like something easy for someone else to read, like CSV file uh, name. And then the type, you'll see a drop down here. And indeed, we want a string here because that's actually a path, right? So we, CSV, there's two ways you could do this, actually. You could just say CSV and, and mention the entire path to the file, which I think is the easiest way to go. Or you could have a separate uh, parameter that says CSV directory and then separately list all of your files in it. Uh, either way is fine. In our case, we're going to keep this very simple and just do CSV as is and then set the default value to what we want. Now, what do we want? So we're going to go into our documents, we're going to go into data stage, and then we're going to go to employees.csv. If you press shift and right click, you can select copy as path, and then go down here to the default value and paste it. So now you have the full path to that file. Now, help text, you can add some help text if you want, but it's not a requirement. Then separately, we need to now rem go back to DB2 so that we can remember what these were. And so I'm just going to sort of put these aside, make a screenshot of that. And then we're going to add all those values in to job parameters. So there's nothing surprising here, so I won't bore you with me t doing all the typing. And we'll come right back. Okay, so what I've gone ahead and done is to create a whole series of parameters. And there's really nothing surprising rising in here, um, there are f except for maybe the fact that uh, when you set up your paths, rather than make them strings, you should set them up as or select the type of path name. And I'm keeping everything lowercase, uh, and whatever is not a path is essentially a string in this example, so db2, and uh, for the instance name, the db2 database name, and so on. The only exception really is encrypted, where you would use that, of course, for passwords, and, and that's really most obvious reason to use it. Now, separately, there's a thing called a parameter, a parameter set, and the way you would create a set uh, is to select two or three of these items and then click on create a parameter set. 
personally, I don't use it quite as much, but it could be useful in the case of something that's uh, rel related. Actually, it would be all four of these. They're all DB2. And you can create a set just for those, uh, just for DB2, essentially. Now, the other thing to keep in mind here, in fact, well, we'll go ahead and do that so you can see what this looks like. I'll just call it DB2, and uh, under parameters, you can see that DB2, um, all four of those items will indeed be converted into a set. You can also explicitly set values. Now, up until now, I'm going to go ahead and click OK, but up until now, uh, we've only been setting default values. It's going to ask us when we create the parameter set where we want to store that, so I'm going to keep this simple, go to the project, and then I'm just going to click here and make a new folder called Parameters. And then I'll select it and click Save, and it says, do you, do you wish to replace the selected parameters with the parameter set DB2. Now, this is important because what that's going to do if you click on yes is it will actually remove all four entries in here. So if you ever want to put them back, you have to manually type them in again and that could be a bit tedious. So you're welcome to hit yes. I'm actually just going to click on no in this case because I want to keep them. And I'm going to show you why. Uh, I'll show you the difference between the set and just a list of parameters. So I'm going to click on no. And uh, and now, as I said before, we really have been just setting default values for everything. And once you start using, once you run the job, I'll show you this in a little while. Once you run the job, you'll be prompted to type in additional um, or type in new values if if needed before running the job. So I'm going to click on OK now. Oh, and by the way, if you need to add a set, an existing set, you can click here on Add Parameter Set, and then now you can just go in here to Parameters and select, uh, you know, another set, which would then uh, be listed or add, be added uh, in here. In fact, if you do that, this is what it looks like. So notice it would say Parameter Set now as its type. So I'm going to remove that since we don't need it listed here, and I'm going to click on Yes. Okay, um, now n normally, well first of all, let's take a look at how you would use this. And then we'll also look at the, the set. Okay, so if I go to my CSV file, and then I go to File, you can see I've already sort of been messing with this a little bit. Now again, n normally, or the way this would look if you had not changed anything, is this long string. Now what we want to do is change that, and it's best n to manually highlight and delete this because whenever you select something with this right arrow it's going to append to whatever was the content was in that field so I'm just going to delete it all click on insert job parameter and then notice what happens you get a whole list just like we had seen before of all the available parameters and in this case this is a CSV file so I'm just going to click on that and the whole thing gets replaced with CSV so you can see this acts very much like a variable and you can click on OK now if you notice, we don't have anything in here that says anything about a set. Now, you might say, well, that's, that's because you didn't actually include your set. So let's say that we do that. If I go up here to the set, go to parameters, and I say, I want to add my set of DB2. Okay. So now at this point, we have all the same values in the set as we do here. And you, in practice, you probably would not want to do this. I just want to show you the difference here. Uh, if you do, what, show you what that looks like if, if you do this. So, if, so we added parameters to our CSV file. If we go to DB2 and we want to replace all these manually entered values with our parameter sets, take a look at what happens. This is the button to do that, use a job parameter. If I click on that, you immediately see the list of all of the items. And if you, you know, wanted, in this case, we want the instance, we would click that, and then there it is. But the question here is, what would happen if we wanted our, um, if we wanted to use the set? So the way that works is you have to select the set as all of these that start db2. And the reason they, so db2.instance name, as opposed to the db2 instance. And the reason for that is because if you go back to your job properties, and you go back to the parameters, we said that the whole set was DB2. So everything inside that set, if I click on View Parameter Set, everything inside that set will be listed here. So it's DB2, like it says here, DB2 dot, DB2 instance, DB2 name, and so on, or DB name, and so on. And that's why you see both. Now again, in practice, you probably wouldn't do this. In, you know, you, you're probably not going to have a set and job parameters, but you might. And if you do, just notice that the ones that are in the set will be prefixed with the name, so db2.db2 instance. So if I do that, it would look like look like that. Now in my case, I'm just going to keep this uh, really simple, and I'll just say I want this to be um, a db name, 
uh, or sorry, DB uh, instance, and then I'm going to make this one the DB uh, the DB database. So there we go. That is the database database name, and then the username, which is here, and then the password, which is there. Now you might, in the case of having many many um, many many connections to a database, so let's say you have like five different databases, this could start to be useful because it's going to be very complicated to try to figure out, okay, which one of my DB names is it, or which one of my DB users is it, or which one of my DB passwords is it. And so in that case, a set would really be uh, come, in use, come in handy. And I'm going to click on OK, and that is our quick rundown for parameters, but you have to keep in mind that if we tried to run this right now, you would get an error message. and First, we'd have to save that, and uh, and notice. See, we don't have an insert statement, so we haven't really finished out with this uh, with this stage, and um, we're we're going to do that soon. Now, another thing is, if the, I tried to run this DB2 connection now, so if I try to test it, what's now with parameters, you're going to get a new dialog box here, which says resolve test parameters. These were already filled in for you. Remember, we called these default values. So if you hit OK, and then uh, you will, after that you will see a connection attempt uh, there to see if it goes through. Now the other thing is to we're going to uh, uh, look at this in a little bit more detail later on but because you have put DB2 as an output or as, as yeah basically the output is the end point of the arrow you are essentially writing to the database. Now if this were reversed and you had CSV at the other side, so the arrow um, uh, were pointing, you know, it, it, the input was DB2 and then CSV was the output, then we would not see inserts. We would see uh, we would see select statements. We could run a select and grab data from this because input and output is critical to DB2 and, uh, uh, and obviously the designer based on the direction of your arrows. So again, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but for now, again, the important thing is when you use these parameters, you will get prompted for values whenever they're being used. And that applies also for um, when you run the job in general. Uh, in a, whenever a parameter is required, you would be prompted to enter it in.